Hi. In this video, I am going to talk about what is analysis of variance in short known as ANOVA. Analysis of variance uh, in short known as ANOVA is used for comparing means between two or more groups. Uh, the important thing here to note here is comparison of means. So let's say there are two samples, sample 1 and sample 2, having means mu1 and mu2. If you want to know if mu1 equal to mu2 or not, then you will be using ANOVA for that. Okay, and you can extend that to a more number of groups. You know, you can have mu1 equal to mu2 equal to mu3, which could be the, your null hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis, at least one of them is not equal to the others. Okay, so in such situations, you can use ANOVA. Now, you might wonder, how can we use the hypothesis testing uh, in ANOVA? Well, ANOVA is some form of hypothesis testing. You know, we are not going to use t-test for that, because for t-test, we just can use you know two groups for more than two groups t test cannot be used so here we can use t test and we can use ANOVA but, you know if the number of groups is more than two then we certainly cannot use t test in that case we'll have to go in for ANOVA and here is an example we have this in null hypothesis that the means are all same so there is no variation of means among the groups that's what uh, we mean by saying that there is no treatment effect the alternative hypothesis is that not all the population means are the same which is to say at least one population mean is different. It need not be the fact that all population means have to be different. It's just that if just one pair is different, then that rejects or that contradicts the null hypothesis. F distribution is something that is applicable when we take the ratio of variances. Okay. And there are two types of variances that we'll be talking about. One is between variance and the second one is within variance. So if when we are taking the ratio of two different variances, the ratio itself will follow F distribution. Using at the moment because you know normally we do not relate variance with uh, mean, but ANOVA is one place where you know we take the help of variance to compare the average values or the means of two distributions. So the F statistic will be close to one if the sample variances are equal. Okay. So here, you know, the between is similar to what is within, which is the null hypothesis. And in this case, it is alternative hypothesis is that they are, they are different. Okay. But ultimately, we want to compare the mean, not the uh, standard deviation or the variance. But we'll, you know, go step by step. The first step, what we'll do is that we will calculate the group means. And we will call that as, you know, y bar 1 dot. So we have, you know, observation. We have four treatment. That means segments. Okay. So segment is something that we, are, we were calling it as treatment. That means is the data is from the same population, except the fact that the samples collected from these populations are different. So these are sample one, sample two, sample three, and sample four. So they basically, you know, so the idea here is whether the average or the mean of sample one and sample two, sample three, and sample four, are they all the same? Or at least one of them is different. So, so that's what we will get to know by using ANOVA. So we'll take the first thing, what is known as group mean, by taking simply the average of all observations. So from Y11 to Y110, if you take the average, you'll get Y bar 1 dot. Okay, so this is just the average within a group. Okay, so this is one group, right? If you take the group is that you will get the group mean. Similarly, you can get the group mean for treatment 2, treatment 3, and treatment 4. Okay, the formula is simple. You just take you know, the average, right? That's what it is. And we denote it as y1 dot, y2 dot bar, y3 dot bar, y4 dot bar. You can also calculate the within group variances. The within group variances will be calculated by just taking these many observations within the same treatment. Okay, in that way, you will calculate for treatment 1. Similarly, if you take for treatment 2, you can calculate the within group variance for treatment 2. Don't mix them up, okay? Just take one treatment or one segment at a time. And that we will call it as within group variance. So this is within group mean and this is within group variance. You can just summarize this in this particular small expression, okay? And we call that as SSW or SSE. So henceforth, we will just use the short form. So this is W is for within. Or we also we can call it as error because you know it has some re relationship with linear regression. So error is something that you know is basically known in, in the linear regression uh, statistical modeling technique. 
So, you know, many times people use it as an error. And why is it an error? I'm sure if you are aware of what is linear regression, you can very well relate. But otherwise, just leave it. We just take it as uh, SSW, okay? But SSW and SSE are just the same. 10 into 4, 4 groups and 10 observations in each sample. So, the grand mean, we will denote it as Y double bar and we have two dots to it, okay? And this expression we will calculate. So, we take all 40 observations, samples, we add them up and take the average by 40, right? That's the overall mean or the grand mean. All right, the sum of the between the, is the variance, between variance can be calculated like this. You take the individual uh, or rather the sample mean minus the grand mean, okay, and take the square and, you know, sum it across the all uh, segments, okay. Now, we have this treatment side, this four treatments and each treatment has a mean, right, y1 dot, y2 dot bar, y3 dot bar, y4 dot bar, right, there are four means, right, and then you take these four means to calculate, uh, you know, the grand mean, right. There you take the variance, okay, and then multiply with 10 because there are 10 observations and we call that as SSB, okay, sum of squares between, okay. The total sum of square is another term. So, here we calculate the variability across all samples, all 40 samples within here, we can see. So, there are three variances we have discussed, right, so far. So, I can explain it very easily. The first variance is the variance within each group. Okay, so here we'll have one variance, here we'll have one variance, here we'll have one variance. So that is nothing but your SSW. Okay, so variance in each segment. Then we have SSB, the variance for each of these means. So there are four means, right? Y1 dot, Y2 dot, Y3 dot, and Y4 dot. So there is a variance within these four observations, right? So that variance is your nothing but SSB. Okay. And the third one is total sum of square, TSS. So, TSS is nothing but the variance of all 40 observations taken together. So, SSW and SSB, when you add them up, you will get TSS. So, you know, intuitively what it means is that the variation among these 40 observations is sum of the variation within each segment or within each sample plus the variation within the means of each sample. You know, if you add them up, you will simply get this total sum of square or total variation among all 40 samples. You know, that's as simple as that. How is it related to ANOVA? Well, an ANOVA is just a, you know, it's just a hypothesis testing where we calculate the F statistics. I told you, right, a couple of slides ago. So in order to calculate the F statistics, we need what is SSB and SSW value for a given sample or for a given set of samples. We have four groups here. You can have as many groups as you want, okay, because no matter how many groups you have, you can have a single SSB and single SSW. One, take the degree of freedom. So, degree of freedom also you can calculate with y. Basically, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to get a ratio of SSB to the SSW, okay. So, that's what F statistic is. And obviously, it's normalized by the degree of freedom of respective uh, variances, okay. And then we get what is known as F statistic. We then look at the F distribution table and then compare with the threshold. Okay, so if you want it at a 95% confidence level, we want it at a 99% or 90%, depending on at what confidence level we want the statistic or the hypothesis testing to to uh, to be performed. We accordingly go and see the table. Okay, so we look at the p-value accordingly. Most of the times we go in for 95%, okay, which is conservative and is good for use. All right. So here is this example. We have four treatments. So this is something to do with uh, you know some length. Okay. So these are numbers. You know, last time we had y1, y2. So these are variables. Uh, last time, but here we have a numerical value, so we can actually calculate it and see by ourselves. So here there are four treatments, and we will calculate you know the SSW, SSB, uh, total sum of square and so on okay and then we will calculate the f statistic and see its significance and thereby we will see whether the null hypothesis is is agreed upon or or the alternative so the null hypothesis in this case is that the mean 
of treatment 1 is equal to mean of treatment 2 is equal to mean of treatment 3 and is equal to mean of treatment 4. So, mean 1 equal to mean 2 equal to mean 3 equal to mean 4. Okay. And the alternative is that at least one of them is not equal. It did not be the fact that all of them have to be not equal to each other. It's just that if one of them is different from the other's three, then that breaks the null hypothesis. So that's the idea here. We'll see that. You are very easy to calculate, right? You know, you take the individual means and we have a grand mean. Take the variance. Easy, right? There are four observations and just one grand mean. Take the variance. It's just the how far each mean of this four treatment is different from the or how far they are from the grand mean. Okay. And that's what is given by the SSB. SSW, which is summation of the variation within each group. So we'll take the mean and then calculate variance for each of these observations within a mean. We can do that for treatment 2, treatment 3, treatment 4, and then we'll then finally add them up. Okay. Let's go back and see the formula. You can easily do that. Right? Slightly more complicated because we have 40 observations. So each time here you'll have to do it many times. Here you have to do many times and then add them up. The final one would be to do the, you know, TSS, but we don't need TSS here, okay, because we have, you know, calculated both and if you just add them up, you will get the TSS because that's the formula. TSS is nothing but uh, your SSW plus SSB. So, you don't need to calculate TSS separately, you know, you just either add them up. In fact, for ANOVA, you don't need TSS because, you know, just the uh, ratio of SSB and SSW, that's what is important. And once you have these numbers, we can just go ahead in finding out the F values. So we have this ANOVA table. We have degree of freedom, sum of squares, mean sum of squares, F statistics, and the corresponding P statistics. Okay, so this is all done. And that we have the between variances and the within variances. That means this is SSB, this is SSW. So how do you calculate the F statistics? F statistics is use this formula to calculate given that we have now SSP, SSW and TSS, you get the F statistics to be 1.14 and the corresponding P value when you look at the F table, just go to and see the F table, take the value, you know, corresponding to 1.14 at 95% confidence, okay, you will get, uh, you know, the P value, the corresponding P value is 0.3. Does that mean that they are different? I mean, does that mean it's significant? No, it is not significant. In that case, we will accept the null hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis is that W mu 1 equal to mu 2 equal to mu 3 equal to mu 4. We'll accept that. So, we can also calculate something similar to what uh, we see in linear regression, the R square. Okay, so the, the degree uh, or the extent to which the uh, variability in the response variable is explained by different uh, factors or different you know segments so to say okay so the, the question here is how much of the variance in height is explained by the treatment group so i told you right we are basically discussing here about height of someone how is it explained by the treatment group so how does treatment group if you take this as a you know some kind of a segmentation how, how much does that contribute towards the variation in height okay that you can calculate by calculating the R square, which is just you know divide SSB with TSS and you will get 9% and that's what. So 9% in the variation in height is being explained by the different segmentation because different variation. Okay, that's not much. 9% is certainly not much. But uh, that's the in fact the reason why we, we concluded that the means are pretty much the same. That means there's hardly any you know different uh, in the mean. Okay, and that's what is clear now uh, statistically. ANOVA is very useful in design of experiments and you know in, in in many areas where you have multiple groups and you want to test whether the average value of you know these groups uh, are same or different. The amount of variation in the outcome variable, dependent variable that is explained by the predictor or the independent variable. Something that we also use in linear regression, right? Similar. 